Hello, I hope you're doing good. If not, as always, I hope it gets better for you. If you've never built an aquarium rack before, this is the video for you. This is more of a beginner guide. Kind of tells you how to read screws. Just lots of tips in this video. I've shot a lot of these videos in sequence as far as building the barn. If you go into the upload list and all the edited videos or even the edited video playlist, and if you watch them in order, back Backwards, forwards, however you want to do it. They actually line up to the build of all this. So it's almost like a series or a season. If you like these kind of videos, keep that in mind because we have lots of cool stuff coming out from before and also videos about to come out. Lots and lots happening here. So saying that, I hope this video helps some of you guys out that may not be so handy at building things. Maybe this will help give you some tips maybe give you some skills to pay the bills or just save money. I will be prepping five other racks in this video because it was shot in sequence. But the main focus is a 20 high side by side. Be a rack with 20 highs lined up. You'll see. Let's get into it. A ton of pieces for this. So this is pretty much all my measurements. Now time to start ripping through that pile. When I measure it out, I like to put the exact number and what rack it's going to. So this is for 20 highs, this is for 75 gallons. So since I got multiple types, I can just stack them accordingly and still get the best measurements out of my wood to make it as efficient as possible so I don't have a lot of waste. And plus, I get all the cutting done at once instead of processing, setting up, and everything all the time. So I was going through cutting my pieces and getting my small side pieces that I need, and this is why I keep my scrap. Because if you guys remember, remember when I messed up on one of these racks, I had to trim it back. I went ahead and saved these, and these are only three inches, but I'm actually gonna need 15 of these, so it worked out great. That's why it's good to save these. Which that'll cut me a lot of cutting and painting. I'll go ahead and paint this in. At least I don't have to do the rest. Whee! But yeah, this is not even all of the next phase. Ton. Wood everywhere. Pieces, pieces, pieces. I had to drag it all in because it started to rain too. Alright, got all the little pieces and wood cut for just these five stands. And these. And those. And those, got to sand it all, then paint it all. I don't even know how many pieces there are. All right, time to set up for paint extravaganza. So I'm gonna go with something a little different this time. Cut the primer and some pure black high gloss enamel. Supposed to have a glass-like durable finish, so that should be neat to see. And since it won't be out here, it's not gonna clash with this stuff being in there. So good place to test it. Well, let's set it up. Boom, like that, we're ready. We're going double decker. Primed, first coat on, it's about 5.30 a.m. But I'm gonna stay up, two hour dry time. Get that second coat on, get this done, get it up. Woo! Get her done. And hit that thumbs up for a dirty thumb. And next setup, going through the next phase, got those over there hard drying. So what I like to do is I'll phase it out. I've got my 20 and 55 rack over there and they just got done earlier today with their last coat because I have to do first run, three sides, flip it over, then this and the ends. As that hardens before I build it, because I don't really want to build it real fresh because it's really easy to ding it up. Might as well run through the rest here. That way these can be hardening up Why I am building it. All right, I gotta wait till tomorrow to finish painting these, but that's why I went ahead and painted them by the rack and just not painting all the wood at once. So I've got my 55 gallon rack here, and then on the other one, on the other side, I've got my 20 gallon high rack I can build. So that'll actually still help keep the flow of doing all this. 
I guess that one project management class is paying off. I did have to move this from over there. I kind of thought ahead on that. That way I'll have space to start working, but let's go ahead and build this 20 gallon high rack, which is pretty much the same as that. So you can see what it looks like before we build it. And this one is actually a few years old, but you can see it's built sturdy. This thing's gonna last a long time, last the move. And the reason why the water is at the level as it is, is I moved it and then I'm just adding water slowly over time so I don't have like a big pH swing. I got that weird soft acidic part of water now. And I got an ozone machine that throws a lot of oxygen in which really throws the pH up. And this is a little different than my other racks I was building because as you can see, it's not one solid tank, it's actually three tanks and this holds 920 highs. Now I would go out to four. I don't have space for it though for what I'm doing. I don't know if I would go over five though when it comes to stretching it out. Maybe if you're using something beefier than a two by four, but with a two by four, I wouldn't go with five. If you wanted to do five, yeah, I'd probably jump up to like a two by eight or something. Because it could be a lot of weight for the middle and over time, sagging, humidity could be an issue. And that's why I double up. Because if it was just one solid piece, yeah, hold for a while, but then you're going to start getting sagging issues and then that'll cause pressure on each tank, then you get busted tanks. So what you'll need for this build is 12 long pieces at 39. It's gonna be, which is gonna be this part. You can build it without seeing the screws. We're actually gonna build the, this one without seeing these screws. So I've got six of them laid out here. I'm gonna drill those for pilot holes to get the screws in. Then we're gonna leave those for later. So let's go ahead and pilot hole and drill and get screws started make life easier on ourselves. I'm gonna go what I like to call high and low on and then towards the lower end of what two by four would be. Now if you don't feel confident about doing this with not measuring, by all means get a two by four, put it up there and you'll get the idea. Which I'm pretty close there. And that's about what you want. That way you're gonna be drilling into this part of this board from the top because when we put it into the legs, the leg screws are gonna go more into the centered part. That's why this is important. Just like all tools, let the tool do the work. You try to force it too much, you'll have problems, you get sloppy, you may get hurt. Now, if you do have to move any tool for some reason, do it with smooth and precision, mentally and physically. That'll help you from getting hurt. Now, I can probably already say I'm not gonna be a big fan of this paint. Like, I do like the gloss. I love the finish and the look of it. But it already got scuffed up just a little bit. Just a little bit from vacuuming. Seems like it's easy to scratch or mess up. I don't know. Dings up pretty easy. It's still kind of fresh. Not worried about those dings though. I know it's hard to see. It'll give it character and plus these are gonna hide. We'll see how it does over time. All right, got those drilled, cleaned up, vacuumed. Now I'm gonna go with a three inch deck mate here. I get these from Home Depot. That's the only place I can find them in black. Got the pilot holes done. Now time to get the screws in. Gonna use a two and a half deck screw. These just happen to be the brand that my ace has. Color finish doesn't matter since we're not even gonna be able to see these boards. Well, I screwed up already. Now make sure you get your screws straight as possible as you can. As you can see here, I screwed up already. Really only needed these edges drilled out. I was treating these like the legs that were gonna be on. But luckily we won't be seeing these and these will be hidden. If you did make this mistake or whatever, sometime you could always put in some black caulk, sand it down, or you could even, even just get the burrs off of it. Use a black marker. Depends on how much you really care. You just leave it. But this shouldn't matter. And hopefully I don't make that mistake again. And we got our 12 sided metal pieces here, which we cut at 19. Got all those moved over. Gonna be working in this space. So as we build, it's about the only open space I got. All right, area nice, prepped, ready to grab all my stuff, screws, tools, all of it. Knee pads definitely help. Grab two of these. Front, back, front, front, back. Go ahead and grab two sides. Left, right. As you can see, you want that front plate in the front, the front long board. 
same as on here. Which just helps with support. And yeah, I know this is all wonky, but you can see how they didn't care. Um, because I was building it on a floor that actually had a level dip down, big dip down. Anyways, as you can see here, this one's got a front plate. It actually, it holds the weight better. That way you're not holding the weight on the side piece, but you're holding the weight on this front boards, which is both. So this is beefed up. This is where you want the weight, not here. Go ahead and knock these things off to burn them. Do be careful because they can get sharp. That way you get a nice tight fit when you screw these in. Which is what we're going to do next. Make sure you're building on a flat surface too because if not it can be really hard to build. If you got somewhat of a straight piece of wood, it'll be level. Like this is not going anywhere. That's... You don't see any gap or end sticking out like it's sticking out. Maybe a tiny bit? No? I mean, yeah, I could do that just a little bit. That could also be the board. One way to test that, flip the board over. Could just been this piece of wood. That's why I always vacuum first. And it's still getting a little tip. But whenever I go to screw this in, I'm gonna make sure this is flat, flush. Same with the edge here, make sure that's nice and flush. As long as that's good, you don't have to worry about a square or anything. It's gonna square itself up if your measurements are right. Oh, I love these rope fish. Such a cool fish. And Brazilian pennywort is ready on the website. And even if it is off a little bit, maybe rock one to the side just a little bit, you know? Not something crazy. Won't matter because we'll level it later as we level the tanks on it and we level the tops on it after we get it on the legs. When we put the legs on, that's when we're gonna really level it out. Also, when drilling, sometimes you gotta screw it and bring it back out so you can get a tighter fit. You can feel when it does. You'll see it'll push. Some screws will do it, some won't. Don't be afraid to put the screw in there because it's going that way. Don't do it too much because then you lose the meat. And this is another thing you can run into where this actually gets propped up after you tighten this up. And all that is this board isn't quite straight. Could have been the factory finish or something or who knows. So all you do, unscrew it a little bit. See how that drops? There's like a threshold there. So now, if we don't have that problem, we can get it flush. And the screw's not sticking out, so you know you're good. And it's not even really much of a gap either. And now for the next step, we gotta figure where to put these side pieces inside. As you can see, I like to line it up here. So we'll just find the edge of a 20 high aquarium, how long it is. Looks like it's 12 and a half away from this edge. So I'm gonna go with that. Put its center at 12 and a half off of that side. Should be the same for the other side. Looks like it's slightly different because we got a little bigger gap. But you can just measure it out with, if you wanna just use this. So as you can see, 20 high is 12 and a half. So we're sitting there. Maybe give it a little bit off the edge because we don't want it too tight. Make a rack too tight, that becomes a problem. Then you can't get your tank in. So it's actually best to leave yourself a little space on each edge. Not too much, but just a little. I've got this wax here that I like to use to mark. We got 12 and a half marked from each end on both. Grab our side piece and find the center and often you'll have to just smack these in because you're going exactly at the same plus with the paint coat work it in there it'll go in make it smooth try not to fight it too much and if you got to get yourself a hammer which if you do end up getting a hammer hit a board don't hit this unless you're just barely tap tapping i'm not gonna see this part either. You guys know what I mean with that board. If it's something delicate. Next part, of course, by the hole. I only like to go halfway, three quarters to the board. That way you're not poking into this. That way you don't get any of that debris in between. And when they screw in, just a better fit. 
And you can use the same screws, but I'm actually gonna use these machine screws because I happen to have a whole bunch of them. And this isn't gonna hold a lot of that weight. If you got a lot of weight, those deck screws are where it's at. And these could be two and a half or three inches. Doesn't matter since you got a lot of meat that way. Get the area cleaned up a little bit. Get the birds off the front of this because I'm going to start putting those on. As you can see here, this is a little wobbly, a little wonky because of what was going on there. But I'm not worried about this because I can fix this. But the main important part is this is all flush at the top. So we're going to get two of these. And once again, as I go in, I'm gonna screw them flush to the top part. My pilot hole in here, and since I already got these, I'm gonna end up using probably one of those and then hit it here, probably hit it here, and hit it here, and here. That way, you get a nice tight fit through it all. I'm gonna use machine screws for that too. And once again, only going halfway through. Actually, since those are both in there, I'm just gonna hit the two in the middle and use both those. Sometimes you gotta go with the flow and do what makes sense. So changing up the usual. Now make sure each end is flush. Get one end screwed in. And you're gonna want two and a half inch screws for this because you don't wanna go through. Then here at this end, as you can see, this could sit up like that if I were to just have it down, but once again, make sure that's nice and flush. It makes a difference if your screws are straight. I'm good to check the side too to know if you need to back out and get more flush. Now next side. All right, that's done. One last touch. Throw a T here in the top right corner. That way I know where it's all built from, where it's gonna extend and where my flush top part is. In case it gets flip flop, especially when you're doing multiple racks and projects at a time, easy to get stuff mixed around. Better safe than sorry. Now to do two more. I also like to go through and choose the better face for my wood. And you see how this one's got an indent? I would not put that up anywhere because it could pool water in it. Definitely make sure that's down. Actually, it's got a decent front to it. Put that down and back. Now that those three are done, time to do the legs, which we got four of them at 58 and a half. Now these are the ones I wanna do four holes on. When I pilot hole these, I wanna go more like in the inside here. That way I don't run into the screws from those. And once again, pick your better face for these sides because this is what you're gonna see, potentially, unless you're stacking them next to each other. And remember, keep that drill straight. And for these, we're gonna use the three inch deck mates. Got some Home Depot, that's what I'm gonna do. That was the only place I could find a black finish. We don't have to paint them or nothing. Screws are in straightish, prepped and ready. And what this does is I won't have to battle my screws as I go to put them up for the top and bottom shelf. So now we simply take one of these, big level. Might as well start at my T. Okay. For this first screw, I'm just gonna make sure this is flat on the bottom. This is flush over here. Make sure that it's flat on the ground. And I'm gonna throw one in there. But now I'm gonna bother to level it. Get just right, because I mean, it barely even needed it. And that should be the case. As long as it's sitting flat and flush, you shouldn't have to mess with it too much. Unless your floor that you're building on is just crazy. And then boom, now I work my way around. Now as you're going through this, and you run into the problem where you hit one of the screws, just keep spinning. Don't worry, just back it out. I'm going at an angle. Inside, go this way. Alright, these are on. And these can finally come off. And these are off. Now for the middle shelf, which I want to stay in line with these. So I'm sitting at 24 inches. And that's measuring from here, taking off this board count. Because that could be a half inch, that could be three eighths. So I want 24 from here. And that's gonna give me six and a half. Now, if I wasn't trying to make a uniform, you could give it much more gap than what it has because as you can see, there's head space. But that's on preference how high you wanna go with it. Yeah, seven and a half inch gap there. Only six and a half, that's fairly tight, but it's really not that, it's really not that bad. I'm just not gonna get anything big in and out of there. This one's really not bad for seven and a half. 
I want to go much shorter. I, want to, I don't think I'd go much shorter than that six and a half. That's why I'm gonna love those with all that room. Which all depends on why you're building racks. Are you gonna build something you're gonna to wanna to work in a lot? Or something you're gonna sit and it's gonna take time to breed out? So I'll go ahead and get my measurement of 24 here. Worked all the way around. This is a rough measurement. This is not precise. I'm hitting it on 24, but it doesn't have to be precise. And now you get, you get another two by four. That way you can get your mark here. Know what the top really is. And what that did was give us a rough area that we know we can drill in. So this is going to be our board space. So now we stay on the inside like we did with the others. And I did drill all the way through these because we're going to need our screws on the outside. And as far as the burrs, I didn't clean them up here because the screws will smash down into them. Then you can clean them up later. But I do like to clean up these burrs once again. Keep it nice and tight. Come. Oh. All right, now this is where leveling becomes a little more important, keeping it straight and level. But even if it's not level, don't worry, you can still even level it later on with the fly board. What I do, go ahead and get it. Get kind of down towards that mark, first mark I laid. Try to have the other end close to it too, that way everything is close to straight for the most part. And it helps to have help in this too. All right, and it have to be right on your mark. And sometimes it can be a struggle. Okay, get that flush where you want it. Throw you in a screw. And then we're gonna move without putting a level on it yet. Now we'll go ahead and put a level on it. Put it on both the sides here. Front one's the one I'm really worried about. Get the head back one on. Go ahead and get one screw in there. It's level. Get this in level. Okay, and flush. Once again, make sure they're flush. Flush and level. Using the leverage of everything to hold it. One screw. Yeah, one screw. Man, that one is just barely off, ain't it? Okay, so that one's barely off because I was struggling with it a little bit. But the good thing is, I can fix that. I gotta quit rushing. I gotta go live for you guys here soon. So I'm trying to hurry up on this. 9.30 Eastern Standard Time, Friday Night Lives. Check them out. You can ask me more questions about this if you need to. All right, so there, that's a better fix. It moved that a little bit too, so we'll go ahead and fix that. There we go. And then I can go ahead and screw these in. The one that I changed to do that last. Boom. And then level up the last one. Whoa, that is way off. And this is how it goes sometimes. Level on the front, completely wonked on the side. And as you can see, that's still level. This one's a little better, but we can fix it with the plywood and a shim in the corner later. And now those are done. Listen to your drill. You ain't got to drive and strip this. And time to do the same with this top one. And voila! And clean off the ends here. Now, finally, vacuum it up, set it in place. Boom, got it in just like that, looking good. I'm sorry, Bear, but your paint just, is that sawdust sticking out? I don't know, it seems a lot more sensitive than the Rust-Oleum. Dinging it up just a little bit, you can see the prime. It's not as durable as the Rust-Oleum. It's better price. You could always do a hard enamel over it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I'll stick with the bear though, because I'm trying to build these to last and not have to repaint. That's the last thing you're gonna really wanna do. Just take your aquarium rack down just to repaint it, because it ain't hold after five years or however long. And when it comes to plywood, always see how this has a smaller particle on it? Always like to put the smoother, bigger particle side up. Yeah, knocking this in, this paint is definitely not that tough. And I do always like to make this just a little smaller than this front because than what this would be. So these are 39 long, 39 long, take off like a blade length or a quarter. That way it's not too tight and easy to put in. Then up top, you could always opt for the over 
overhang where you cover this part, you go over that. See, boom. So this is actually a little bit longer. Now the tank won't sit on this, but it's good for a little shelf space. Now if it's a 48, like for a 75 gallon, I would opt out on this because it would be longer than a 48, which will just rip through plywood and cost you a buttload. Especially since one four by eight, 48 inches by 96 is $30 now, was 15. And then for the last part, getting the tanks on, and there's a couple options for this. Where you get your tanks in, you either put it on there and not screw it down, but I don't recommend screwing it down until you get the tanks on it and you can make sure that the tanks are all leveled out properly how you want to. Because if you have to level it out, I like to use these composite shims. You can get under the base of where the tank is. Matter of fact, yeah, you can see here how the pressure there, which actually I should have this more under here. So that's not quite done right. And I didn't even follow through with any in the middle, which is good to follow through with some in between. You can see how this just kind of floating. It's hitting the edge, but it's gonna be sitting on something. Oh, there is shims in there. I just hit them. But you know what I mean. And then after you get the shims in, then you can screw it down. But I would say it's not, I wouldn't even bother screwing it down because then you expose a hole into it, which water can seep into. And once you get the tank on, it's not going to be necessary. It's not going to move around once water's in there. So I'm opting with the no screws. I do like the high gloss of this, but yeah, it just ain't that tough. You no, know, I put four coats on the edge of this to see what it does because I had to do two coats for each side. Might as well hit the edge but yeah look at it yeah. not saying rust-oleum's flawless either but this probably really got rubbed in the move I mean, it's not bad this thing got dinged up yeah, <laughs> uh, you can see it left some scratches in the gloss there just a little bit i wonder if you can buff those out i'll just get a little wet let's see nope those are stuck but ain't nobody gonna ever ain't nobody gonna be like oh look at them scuff marks so i don't think i'm gonna have to repaint that can you see them so there you have it that's how you build a 20 gallon high multi-rack tank multi-tank rack holds nine all right so we just got done building that now time to build this 55 gallon stand that's gonna go over here which is our stand right there and you guys seen from the last video that's where the 20 was 55 we're progressing now for this 55 gallon build i hope some of you guys may learn some tips or tricks maybe inspired you to make your own custom rack i appreciate you all watching thank you thank you so much for the awesome support and hit the subscribe button because there's going to be all kinds of other stuff coming out we've been building this barn as you can see throughout all the other videos plus we've got other content that is about to come out that isn't just rack builds. So bear with us as we build this barn. We're gonna have lots of different content for you guys. So stay tuned for that. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. That'd be awesome of you. Until next time, everybody, peace. I'll see you on the next one.